Clear Skies Adventurers, in this video we're going to take a look at the community subclasses for the Bard, the Monk and the Warlock, the three classes that are coming to the game Celesta, Crown of the Magister. If at any point you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this, it really helps out the channel. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. Last June, Tactical Adventures had their second Wishing Well, which is an event where everyone gets to submit a subclass design for the upcoming classes. In this case, for the Bard, the Monk and the Warlock. After going through all the submissions, the devs at Tactical Adventures have made their choices and we're going to take a look at them. First, let's take a look at the Bard. The subclass design that was picked for the Bard is the College of Heroism. Here is a small description given by Tactical Adventures for this subclass. Bards from the College of Heroism aren't content with just telling their stories, they must be part of it. Their thundering voice ensures that their allies are always at their best, and at their side, even the most cowardly soldiers become stalwart combatants. Even at times most dire, the tale will not end with a heroism bard in your party. Now let's take a look at the features that this subclass will be getting. They get bolster morale at level 3. When an ally uses your bardic inspiration dice, they roll twice and pick the highest result. At level 3, they also get heroic tail. Use an action to bolster an ally you can see within 30 feet for 1 minute. They gain advantage on all saving throws and immunity against frighten and fear effects. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. At level 6, they get Thundering Voice. Whenever you grant a Bardic Inspiration to an ally, the closest enemy within 60 feet must make a Wisdom saving throw or take 1d8 plus your Charisma modifier Thunder damage and have disadvantage on their next attack roll. At level 14, they get At Road's End. When an ally you can see within 60 feet is reduced to 0 hit points, you can use your reaction to make them fall to 1 hit point instead. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. Keep in mind that the level 14 is currently not in the game and there's no plan for it yet, however, I have a feeling that it will be implemented eventually. As for the other subclasses for the Bard, we will get more information about them in the coming months, but for now, we have the names. We have the College of Lore, the College of Hope, and the College of Tradition. Since the College of Lore is SRD, I will leave a link in the description for the tabletop version of this subclass. Just keep in mind that Tactical Adventures might tweak some of the features of the SRD subclasses to adapt them to the game. Now let's take a look at the Monk. The subclass design that was picked for the Monk is the Way of Light. Here is the small description that we have for this subclass. Stay in the light, friend. Such a simple expression, yet most forget its origin. After the Cataclysm, many struggled to survive in the dark times that loomed over Celasta. The Way of Light appeared around that time, with its practitioners helping to keep isolated settlements safe from the many creatures of the dark that lurked around. The features that this subclass will be getting are Luminous Key at level 3 You learn the light and shine cantrips Whenever you hit a creature with one of the attacks granted by your flurry of blows, they automatically start emitting bright light until the end of your next turn. At level 6, they get Radiant Strikes. Anytime you strike a target affected by Shine or Luminous Key, you deal an additional 1d4 Radiant Damage. And at level 11, you get Blinding Flash. As a bonus action, you can spend 2 key points to generate a blinding burst of light. All creatures within 3 cells of you must roll a constitution saving throw or take 3d6 radiant damage and become blinded until the end of your next turn. The other subclasses for the monk will be the way of the open hand, the way of freedom and the way of survival. And lastly for the warlock, the subclass design that was picked is the timekeeper. Here is the small description that we have for the subclass. Timekeepers are strange and mysterious entities who exist beyond the fabric of time and space. And you've made a pact with one, allowing you to make small adjustments in endless flow of the river of time, as unnatural as it may sound. Here are the features that this subclass will be getting. 
At level 1, they get Curse of Time. Whenever you damage an opponent with a spell, they become afflicted with the Curse of Time. Enemies under the Curse of Time take half your proficiency bonus force damage at the start of their turn for the next minute. At level 6, they get Time Shift. After you take damage, you can use your reaction to revert time. You briefly disappear in a time rift and heal back the damage received. You are considered banished until the start of your next turn. After you use this feature, you can't use it again until you complete a long rest. At level 10, they get Accelerate. You can use a bonus action to briefly accelerate an ally other than yourself within 30 feet. They gain the effect of haste until the start of your next turn. However, they do not suffer from lethargy when Accelerate ends. You can use this feature a number of time equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. And at level 14, which is currently not in the game, they get Time Warp. On your turn, you can take one additional action. Once you use this feature, you must finish a long rest before you can use it again. We also have the expanded spell list for this subclass. For the level 1 spells, they get Long Strider and Magic Missile. For the level 2 spells, they get Blur and Calm Emotions. For the level 3 spells, they get Haste and Slow. For the level 4 spells, they get Greater Invisibility and Phantasmal Killer. And for the level 5 spells, they get Raise Dead and Mind Twist. The other subclasses for the Warlock will be the Fiend, the Hive and the Tree. Here is some more information about the upcoming DLC. They will be adding class-specific items for the new classes. 16 new feats will be added to the game. We're getting 3 more backgrounds, Ascetic, Artist and Occultist. One more race will be added to the game but we don't know which one. Warlocks will have their Pact Boons but they're reworking Pact of Chains so that the different familiars will give you a bonus rather than summoning a critter. And lastly, we don't have a release date for this DLC, but it should come out in a few months. That's it for this video, please leave a like, consider subscribing for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay in the light!